When Ocarina of Time came out, suddenly we were in a 3D world, fighting 3D bosses and doing 3D puzzles. The Nintendo 64, it changed things. Surprisingly powerful little system for its time. And, like all the Zelda games, they keep getting better and better. Ocarina happens to be my favorite, and because of that, I've been doing this series. Like the Ocarina games getting better over time, so it is with life, and so it is with me. And that's why I'm going back, making these special editions versions. And I hope you enjoy them. I've corrected some things, made them a little bit better, and we're still going to have a lot of fun. So thanks for joining me. This is Loud Boy. Let's go get them. In the vast deep forest of Hyrule, long as I served as a guardian spirit, I am known as the Diku Tree. The children of the forest, the Kokuri, live here with me. Each Kokuri has his or her own guardian fairy. However, there is one boy who does not have a fairy. Navi, Navi, where art thou? Come hither. Oh, Navi the fairy, listen to my words, the words of the Diku tree. Dost thou sense it? The climate of evil descending upon this realm. Malevolent forces are now mustering to attack our land of Hyrule. For so long, the Kokori forest the source of life has stood as a barrier, deterring outsiders and maintaining order of the world. But before this tremendous evil power, even my power is as nothing. It seems the time has come for the boy without a fairy to begin his journey. The youth whose destiny it is to lead Hyrule to the path of justice and truth. Navi, go now. Find our young friend and guide him to me. I do not have much time left. Fly, Navi, fly. The fate of the forest, nay, the world, depends upon thee. And so it begins. Hello, Link. Wake up. The great Tiku tree wants to talk to you. Link, get up. Hey, come on. Can Hyrule's destiny really depend on such a lazy boy? That's how I feel in the morning. <laughs> I feel you, Link. You finally woke up. Well, I'm Navi the Fairy. The great Tiku Tree has asked me to be your partner from now on. Nice to meet you. The great Tiku Tree has summoned you. So let's get going right now.
So first things first. We have to go outside. Ah, uh, home. Yahoo! Hi, Link. Wow, a fairy? Finally, a fairy came to you, Link. Wow, that's great news. I'm so happy for you. Now you're a true Kokuri, Link. Is that right? The great Deku Tree has summoned you? It's quite an honor to talk to the Deku Tree. I'll wait for you here. Get going. Go see the great Deku Tree. Well, we're gonna do that. But... We can't right away, and here's why. Let's, let's go try. Thank you. We needed that. Those are five rupees, the blue one. Alright, let's so check out this dude. Hey you, Mr. No Fairy. What's your business with the Great Deku Tree? Without a fairy, you're not even a real man. What? You've got a fairy? Say what? The Great Deku Tree has actually summoned you? What? <laughs> Why would he summon you and not the Great Mido? This isn't funny. I don't believe it. You aren't even fully equipped yet. How do you think you're going to help the Deku Tree without both a sword and a shield? Mm. That's what we need, isn't it? What? You're right. I don't have my equipment ready, but... If you want to pass through here, you should at least equip a sword and a shield. Sheesh. Okay. So there you go. I wouldn't call that a hint, more a uh, sledgehammer to the face of, like, this is what you need. All right, to do th both of those, we need to get the shield, we need rupees. We actually need to buy it. And to get the, um, you, can you can go in all these huts, obviously. And in some of these, there's actual um, rupees in there. There's some money. But first things first, we will collect our rupees. We need 40 of them to get the shield. However... The sword is free. We just have to know how to find it. Alright, so we are at now up to 10. Bottom left hand side of your screen, you can see the rupee count. 15. Heart. And finally, the fourth chest. A green, which is worth 1. So we're up to 16. Remember, we need 40. So, I'm just collecting a few before we go get that sword. Because, again, that's a freebie. So, let's go over this. Ah, oh, look at that. That makes 21. Not bad. Okay. We can't even cut grass yet. Because... To cut grass, you need something sharp, like a sword. Alright, so back here is a little tunnel. Okay. And your little action icon, the, the blue button, will, will say enter. And you press the blue button, and you enter, and we crawl through the tunnel. Now, this is a maze back here. Oh, thank you very much. It's 26. And that's a sign, huh? All right, now let's go this way. A boulder kind of winds its way around this maze. And there's 33, nice. 21 up to 33 real quick. We just need seven more. So remember, I said you just have to know where to find it. After you go through the little hole, make your way around this maze in the back part. Right there. Go carry sword. So like everything else in Ocarina, you have to equip things. And boy, does this get fun when we get up to the Water Temple. You can check out that video. It's on my channel, Water Temple. All right, so... Meaning, uh... There's different boots down here at the bottom. There are iron boots, and there's hover boots, and a regular boots. And then you have to switch back and forth depending on what you want to do, but this is easy enough. 
We only have one sword for now. When we press the button, and boom, we have a sword. So it is our green button. You can see the uh, icon up there. The little sword on it. And boom, boom, boom. Yeah. We now have a sword. Sometimes... Okay, sometimes you can get rupees by uh, cutting grass. And other times, it just depends on what it is. But, uh, cash and prizes await you. Nothing spectacular, but, you know, some people spend, uh, hours just going around cutting grass. Not really my cup of tea, but, uh, eh, there's, there's one, there's two. And there's another one. Look at that. Look at split. We're up to 38. Another fun thing you can do when I first started playing this game, uh, you can cut down these. See that? And then the other thing is, yeah, like right now, I'm just doing a regular slash, and boom, 43. Remember, we needed 40. We just got 43. Um, regular slash is just a green button. However, if you say Z target something and then press forward, and then your blue button, you can do this much more powerful forward slash, if you will. All right, so we now have 45. There is a store, remember, right over yonder? I just said yonder. <laughs> right over there, uh, where Mido was. Okay, that's where we were a moment ago, where he said, no, not yet. Well, right to our left right here. And this girl always stops us, by the way. The game tries to subtly, not so subtly, teach us things about what we should do and how we should do them. So, for instance, the Z button, right? This button I'm using underneath right here. When I press and hold that, that Z targets something. And you can use that on enemies to attack them, to lock onto them. Also, things like your boomerang, your uh, bow and arrow, <clears throat> things like that. You can lock on, shoot, takes a lot of the guesswork out. However, you can also talk to people the same way. So that girl sitting up there, I just Z targeted her, pressed my blue button, and we have a conversation. So that's the game's way of saying, hey, this is how you do that. Yes, thank you, lady. All right, so we go in here. Now, there's actually a hidden rupee back around the store. Ah, thank you. Um, there's five rupees waiting for us, just kind of sitting there in the dark. Can't see them, but they're, they're back there. So, basically, what we do is we can press left or right right here. You know, instead of talking with the owner, instead of quitting, just press left or right. And we hit the shield. And yes, we're going to buy it. Boom. So like the sword before this, we now have the shield, which is really cool. And guess what? We can, all right. So that just took 40 of our rupees from us, worth the price of admission, literally, because that actually gives us, so let's equip that. Here's our sub screens using a Z to go left and R to go right. And boom. We now have a shield. Okay. Uh, this button lets you take out the shield like that. And then when you sort it out, you can, you know, so basically, yeah, that's your shield. And let's talk to Mido again. Let's see if he's pleased about this. If you want to see the great Deku tree, you should at least equip a sword and a shield. Huh? What's that? You have a Deku shield? And what's that? Is that the Kakuri sword? Good grief. He's, he's thrilled, isn't he? Well, even with all that stuff, a wimp is still a wimp, huh? I, the great Mido, will never accept you as one of us. Shoot. How did you get to be the favorite of Sarah and the great Deku Tree, huh? Grumble, grumble. He's a, he's a really happy dude. I think he's just jealous. We are Link. Okay. This could be some, our first enemies right here. And when you hit those guys, we get this. A Deku stick. You can use this as a weapon and as something to, uh, like a, a makeshift torch, if you will. It'll actually hold a flame for a uh, period of time, letting you light other things and use flame. Great Deku tree. I'm back.
O oh, Navi, thou hast returned. Link, welcome. Listen carefully to what I, the Deku Tree, am about to tell thee. Thy slumber these past moons must have been restless, full of nightmares. As the servants of evil gain strength, a vile climate pervades the land and causes nightmares to all who are sensitive to it. Verily, thou hast felt it. Link, the time has come to test thy courage. I have been cursed. I need to break the curse with your wisdom and courage. Dost thou have the courage enough to undertake this task? That's right. Yeah, we do. Then enter Brave Link, and thou too, Navi. Navi the fairy, thou must aid Link. And Link, when Navi speaks, use that button and listen well to her words of wisdom. Okay. This is our first dungeon, essentially. Inside the Great Deku Tree. And away we go. Alright, right off the bat, we're in a massive room. Okay? Multiple stories tall. And we will go up there. Down here at ground level, there are some some of the same enemies. They always seem to get me. This is our next item. The Deku Nut. You can actually you can throw these. Um, and they create kind of a little blast of light, like a flashbang, if you will. And and you can stun enemies with them. So that they can be useful. Here's some more of that grass. Ah, thank you. Heart. And there's another one. I keep letting him smack me in the face. And another one. Right. See ya. Okay. And Navi's yelling at me again. All right. I missed the cue. All right, so up the ladder we go. There is, you can go the other way. I, I always, since the dawn of me playing this game, and my goodness, what is that? Close to 30 years now? Um... I've always just liked to go up the ladder. Just my thing. Ah, look at that. New enemy. Yep. And right here is our first big chest of the Deku Tree. Let's see what's inside. And that would be our dungeon map. Beautiful. So now you can see the right-hand corner of our screen that we have a map. We're going to take care of those guys in a moment, but we need something first. This is Navi telling us that to open a door, you stand in front of it and press A. Thank you, Navi. Pay attention to what the action icon says. I, I referenced this earlier. Well, depending on where you are, what you're facing, standing in front of... Um, that blue button will change. All right, so so I'm I'm Z targeting him, locking on. So with one hand finger on my Z, other one on my right hand button, that allows me to. And I missed it. Good job. Too busy showing you stuff. All right, it allows you to Z target him and use your shield. And what that does is, when he's shooting the Deku nut at me. <clears throat> it'll uh, deflect perfectly back at him and send the pro projectile back and, you know, smack him. Now I'm talking to him. Forgive me, Master. I'll give you a clue. Will you let me go? When you jump off a high cliff and you hold your control stick forward, you'll roll on the ground and land, but you won't get hurt from the fall. I can't guarantee it'll work, though, if the cliff is really, really high. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try it. All right, which is true. If it's not too high of a platform, you jump off. If you just press forward, uh, you can do a roll, and and that'll save you some damage. It's a nice thing. Use it all the time. All right. Hopefully, I'm not turned around here. I am. We're going back in. 
You can see that he's not there anymore, of course. So we took care of him. All right. So here, just run, run, run. Believe it or not, you can actually make that jump. Big chest number two. There it is. This is what we need to take care of those, um, those wall skotellas. And you know I, what I like to say? The best spider is a dead one. Thank you. Are they telling us how to use it? So, like, and we haven't even equipped anything yet. So, let's do just that. Um, try, I think I like my... And basically what I'm doing is I'm highlighting in the menu and pressing the corresponding uh, yellow, the C, yeah, C buttons, uh, where I want each item. Um, and so for now, I'm going to do this. There we go. All right, so testing out. This is what we're gonna do. Take out my slingshot. Now he's actually over there. So again, using Z targeting, slingshot, and we shoot, and we score. And what that does is that drops and that drops the ladder down. So that's the game's way of teaching us how to use our new lease slingshot. And we need projectiles to shoot from our slingshot, and these are Deku seeds. Another item that we can collect using grass and, and other things in places. Um, and you can run out of them. As you can see right now, we have 30. Okay, it's green and it's, it's 30. So yeah, we now have the slingshot. And I went the wrong way. How's that? But I'm going to use this to show you this. Watch this. Push forward. See the roll? Okay. I didn't get hurt from that jump because I did that little roll pressing forward on my control stick. All right, here we go. This is where we saw the little do before. Going through, going through. Now, we're gonna backtrack, go this way. Because now we can actually take Z target, slingshot. I don't know what to look. Pretty cool. All right, now, there is one, more, yeah, there he is, one more up there. I'd like to take care of him before I go up though. And he's gone. Cool. And she's telling us stuff that we already know, but that's cool. Uh, a little early warning system there. Thank you, Navi. All right, so climbing up. Now that the wall is free of our little arachnid friends, we can climb on up. This takes us to, this is our way of ascending up through the dungeon, going to another floor. Those are supposed to be vines on the wall, believe it or not. Um, they sort of look like vines, sort of not, but... All right, these guys can be trickier. All right, they're not on the wall. They don't kill as easily. You don't want to just smack them. All right, you wait till they're their little exposed belly. Like that. If you smack them with that, that skull kind of plating, uh, they'll just swing back and forth. It, you won't do, do them any damage. However, like anything, you expose that soft underbelly, and you're good to go. All right, this is a little puzzle, okay? So remember I mentioned that the Deku stick can act like a torch. Well, let's light her up. Bring that flame right over to this one. That unlocks the room. However, we're not through the room yet. We need to actually do it. That's what the switch is for. The switch raises the platforms, allowing us just enough time to run across. Like that. And seeing what's on the other side. We have a compass. So the map is nice, but doesn't do us much good without seeing what's on the map and where we are on the, on the map, where we were, where we are. And that's indicated, if you look at your map right now, the red arrow is where we've come from, okay? That way, if you're in a room and you're facing a certain direction where the yellow arrow, you can see which direction I'm facing right now. Um, I know not to go back to the red door or, or if I need to, you know, exit the room that way. But it also shows if, if it has two ways in, I've come in this door, but I need to exit this door, and the red arrow will be here, but I know to go this direction. 
I think you got me, right? Um, not that difficult, but that's that's how the mechanics of it work. All right. So over here, we need to do one more thing. There's a lovely little prize waiting for us. Now you saw that there were three. When we hit that switch, three mounds went up. We went straight across before. However, if we head off to our left, okay, look at that. There's our prize right there. I guess the Giga Spike. Booyah. This is the first of many, many gold Skulltellas. Lots of cash prizes await us. No, just prizes. Some really cool stuff, though. Um, piece of heart. But one of the biggest things is the Stone of Agony. Um, had a different name in the 3DS version, but basically this allows you to, uh, your controller will vibrate when it's near some kind of secret. A lot of times there's a hole in the ground and it's, you can't see it, right? It's kind of cloaked, but like the Song of Storms or a bomb will expose that. But this allows you to see, if you will, um, hidden things. Um, so that's what it does. And remember what we did before. I'm just going to leave that guy alone. I don't actually have to touch him. Let's see what's in the chest. And a piece of art. Thank you. All right. As you see right now, we have a whopping three. Three uh, heart containers. Don't worry. We'll get more. In fact, when we uh, beat the boss of this dungeon, we will get another one. I'll bring us up to a whopping four. All right. So, under soft underbelly. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Forward slash. Booyah. Now, somewhat tricky, meaning it's, if you saw, when we entered this room, we were down at the bottom and we looked up. We could see the multiple stories and levels of this giant room. However, in the middle there, over a big hole, were uh, spider webs, essentially. And so basically, you can burn those in some places. However, in this place, if you do the just the right thing, like that, and you fall, you actually break on through to the other side. And yeah, and so now we are in the basically, essentially, the basement. Uh, to check that, we you know, pressing our start button. Remember, we have the map. Okay. See how they're all blue? Okay. Floor one, two, and three, that's where we just were. That's that tower that the going up the trunk of the tree. However, breaking through the spider web brought us down to B1, which is the first level, the basement. See the flashing area, kind of that, that blue, uh, blue green color back and forth? Um, that shows us that there's a chest in the section that shows us where we are. The outline sections are the other parts of this level that are unexplored yet, places we have not yet been. So, a little 101. Okay, you guys probably knew that already, but um, for those of you who didn't, hey, that, that was for you. All right, so I took him out. Now, remember, we got a gold skull teller before. There's a couple more down here, including right here. Using my slingshot. One, two. Booyah. Now, all we have to do is climb on up and get it, and then it'll give us two total. Now, by pressing start button inside this menu, right here in the quest status section of the subscreens, you can see it shows you how many you have. So if you ever want to check, that is where you check. All right, so a couple of things to do in this room. By the way, there's another one over there. We're not going to get him just yet. But yes, there's another gold school tower. Oh, I hit the button anyway, didn't I? Well, that what that does is that lights that torch. It is now lit. Piece of heart, thank you. All right, this this can be a little tricky, but if you land in the right place, it's not so tricky. So check it out. Looking at the water below. All right, see that kind of section right there? Uh, there's floor that you can walk on. The other places you'll sink low enough to where you're swimming. So what we want to do is be able to walk because the second you go plunge it deep enough in the water, your torch goes out or your deco stick. So I'm going to light this. 
and then run across. I just, I hope it is, didn't mess up my timing here. And I'm gonna do a little roll. That burns away the cobwebs. I mentioned that earlier that we can burn them. All right. Remember what I mentioned before? Let's go look at the map. So remember the big section was kind of the blue before and it's flashing. That's where we were. The flashing section is where we are now. All right. It's another one of these guys. Z target shield. Please forgive me, master. I'll never do it again. If you spare me, I'll teach you something cool. You will never beat my brothers up ahead unless you punish them in the proper order. Two, three, one. Never changes. 23 is number one. Well, Michael Jordan would tell you that. Do you think I'm a traitor? Very much so, dude. You're a traitor. Okay. So, yeah, it's 231, or 23 is number one. Because I am a 33 man, meaning I, I grew up and I love uh, Larry Bird. I, I, I grew up in New England near Boston, and uh, yeah, ever since I was a kid, loved Larry Bird. I uh, still do. So, all right. And, but, come on, when they were on the Dream Team together, that was awesome. Michael Jordan and Larry Bird and Scotty Pippen and um, others, Charles Barkley. Uh, but was Cream on that too? You guys are probably yelling at the screens right now, trying to tell me the rest of them. But yeah, the Dream Team was awesome. And to see Larry Bird and they just, in the Olympics, man, they demolished them. Yeah, it was fantastic to watch. Enjoyed the heck out of it. And I think Larry, Larry was one of the two captains of the team. The other was probably, I think, Michael um, Magic Johnson, I believe. They were the two captains, I think, of the Olympic team, the dream team. All right. This room, see that spiky rotating log bar thing? Well, that'll get you. But down below right here, I'm pressing holding down my blue button. Okay, my A button. And what that does is this lowers the water just enough to where... We can. You gotta time this sucker out too. And what, what I'll do a lot of times is pressing my, my R button. There we go. That allows me to uh, squat down with my shield and just to make sure I have enough room. All right. There's another one of those. Remember where to be hit them? Soft underbelly. Like any animal you're trying to take out. Okay. I almost missed that one. This next part, Navi's about to warn us of it, by the way. Here we go. There it is. Stand next to this block, grab hold of it with A, and while holding it, you can push or pull it. All right, so this is our first time um, having to push and pull things. Again, remember we talked about the action icon or the blue button, the A button, doing different things. This is a good example of it. So when you stand next to it, Right now, it tells me to grab, but if I push forward, it switches to climb. I can climb it, or I can grab it. Climb it, grab it, grab it. On this side, does it say push? Uh, grab, well, meaning push after. So, pressing, holding down A. You can now push this block. All right? And I think this is the, that's also a way for the game to teach us the back and forth of that button, the different things it can do. So basically, we we do two different things with that same. Act. I know, I get real simple stuff, but all right. There's that guy. At least he didn't harm me that time. I like that. All right, this room. This room is this the one? Let me check things out here. A couple of these rooms look very similar. This is not okay. They're. There is a room coming up that I'm thinking of, and we'll talk about it when I get there. When we get there, so. All right. Booyah. I'm not letting you hit me this time. Okay. Deku stick. I have... Oh, good. I have two. So, running around the room with it lit. I'm going, taking the longest way you can imagine. There we go. Also, a little tip. The second you get something lit with that Deku stick, hit your sword... Puts that deco stick away and it doesn't burn out, okay? Otherwise, it burns like a match. And it's useless, but you can actually reuse them if you just put that sucker away and not let it burn out after you've used it. Remember what we talked about before? 
this is a good example. Uh, check out the map, lower right hand side. You can see the red arrow, okay? Now watch this, if I walk over to this door, this is the door in which we came, and this is the door that we need to go to. Well, yeah, we're through, all right. Waiting, waiting, and here we go. Thank you. Another dead spider, love it. Oh, this room, okay. These are, they're like these little spider dudes that come down and they start attacking you, but, oh shoot, am I not, sometimes you're too far away, yep. Let's see if I'm cl close enough now. If you hit them while they're still on the ceiling, they do not, closer, they do not come down, hatch, by the way, these little spider dudes. They're spider babies, by the way. And if they're the babies, shoot, still not close enough. Then guess what? There's a mama. And that's all I'm saying about that. All right, booyah. Dead, gone. You'll see enough of them in a moment. Okay. So yeah, is this the room that I was thinking? Let's see. Give me, give me those seeds. Missed them. Okay. That's that way. This is not. All right. There's a room coming up with a wall that can be bombed. Well, we don't have bombs yet, right? And that's why you can actually return after you've gotten bombs in the Nongo's Cavern up on Death Mountain. You can return with those, come back into this place, and... Wait, no, this is the one. Sorry. Um, okay. Where's our torch? I'm gonna, make, I'm gonna make us all dizzy here. I'm gonna burn this away. This is the room. Apologies. It was hiding behind that web. Okay. Yeah, right here. This wall can be bombed. So you can return later on with bombs, blow that wall, and I believe there's a gold skull tunnel behind it. So, alright. Again, Deka stick. Let her up, let her up. Come over here. Do a nice little roll. Oh yeah, I love rolling. <laughs> With the fire, I know, the little things, right? All right, so again, action icon, we line her up and it says enter. I'm pressing A and we enter. We got it. Okay. We also talked about before in that big room how you can, just like the other place, you, you can roll. And what that does is it allows you to burn the floor or and if the floor happens to be spider webs well you burn those too well this is the example of that however 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 we have something else to do first you can see how i'm walking on this web and we will actually have to get rid of that web but first things first pushing this block across the way there's no fire on the side of the room and to burn that web we need fire we need to carry it with our deep stick but to do so has this little puzzle first. Hear that little chime? That chime tells us that we've done something right. All right. Hold on, give me a second. All right, over here. Before, well, by the way, we fell down up there. Okay. It's where we fell down from that big room up on uh, level one. Okay. The multiple levels that we came in going up the tree trunk. When we fell into this water and we were up on that ledge right across there. Well, we couldn't come over to the side yet. However, I showed you that gold skull tala. Well, now we can get it. I told you we'd do it in a moment. We're here. All right, so aiming. One, two. The only really graceful way to do this is to Z target that sucker. Okay, we don't have a boomerang. And I missed it, darn it. And you can actually kind of do sort of like a little jump off. Give me a second here. Climbing. Oh, I said climbing, please. Nope. There we go. Um, let me try and get a little closer. C target. Here we go. There is no jump button, but in a way that action acts like a jump. So you can climb this ledge right here. Now, get ready. Because when you have that, you need to act kind of quickly. 
light it up, light it up, go straight across onto the block, onto the block, and then press A to roll. Oh yeah, and then roll. <laughs> that was kind of cool. Um, I took out my sword right away again. Well, the water would have extinguished. Now, remember the little traitor dude earlier, right? He was warning us about this very spot. And what number did he say? That's right, two, two, two three, almost. Yeah, 23 is number one, or 231. Well, he's referencing these three guys, okay? As in one, two, three, from left to right. Well, two would be in the middle, so let's go see him. Z target, shield, is one. Two, three, one, okay. This is three. And over to one. There we go. I go and talk to him, talk to him, talk to him, talk to him. Where are you? Get back, get back. Oh, get back. oh. that's embarrassing. Oh, good, he's still frozen. Cool. I was hoping his brothers didn't. All right, let's go get him right away. Where are you? If you kind of stand on this plot. It's so annoying. I'm going to reveal a secret of Queen Gamma. Remember I mentioned a mama? Mama Spider? That's her. All right. In order to administer the coup de grace to Queen Gamma, strike her with your sword while she's stunned. Oh, Queenie. Sorry about that. All right. In these early dungeons, there are not, there are no boss keys, okay? So believe it or not, we're rolling right into a boss right here, okay? This chamber has a big, massive, disgusting spider. And I hate spiders. You know, Indiana Jones hates snakes. Well, that's me with spiders. Can't stand them. All right, so... To see that spider, I'm taking out my slingshot. I see an eyeball up there. Little cutscene shows us our enemy, the queen. Yuck. All right, there's a couple ways to do this. One way, I mean, the best way really is to hit that eyeball. You can, um... Hit that eyeball while she's on the ceiling, so I have to distract her for a second there. And, uh, when that eyeball turns red, right about now, hit it with your slingshot, take out your sword. I was hoping I'd get it that first go around, but all right. Now, keep watching her, keep Z targeting, keep Z target, Z target, Z target, Z target. And then wait for it to turn red. There it is. Red. There we go. Use my slingshot and forward slash. Oh crap. Right behind her. And there she goes. Just a rotting, burning, festering carcass now. I tell you, first of many additional heart containers. And that brings us up to four. All right. As with every dungeon, when you beat it, grab your heart container first. Don't leave without it. Then head off to this blue. This is the portal. This portal takes us out in the future in the big dungeons it'll always take you to the um, chamber of sages something like that um but now this brings us back to the deco tree well done link thou hast verily demonstrated thy courage I knew that thou would be able to carry out my wishes. Now, I've yet one more to tell thee. Wouldst thou listen? 
Now, listen carefully. A wicked man of the desert cast this dreadful curse upon me. There he is. King of evil. This evil man ceaselessly uses his vile sorcerer's powers in search of the sacred realm that is connected to Hyrule. For it is in that sac sacred realm that one will find the divine relic, the Triforce, which contains the essence of the gods. Before time began, before spirits and life existed, Three golden goddesses descended upon the chaos that was Hyrule. Din, the goddess of power. Nehru, the goddess of wisdom. Thor, the goddess of courage. Din. With her strong, flaming arms, she cultivated the land and created red earth. Meru poured her wisdom under the earth and gave the spirit of law to the world. Faror, with her rich soul, produced all life forms that would uphold the law. Sounds like a trustworthy, good society, doesn't it? The three great goddesses, their labors completed, and the golden sacred triangles remained at the point where the goddesses left their world. Since then, the sacred triangles have become the basis of our world's providence and the resting place of the Triangles has become the sacred realm the Triforce. The Triangles. But yeah, I mean, they are three parts made one. The Trinity, if you will. Thou must never allow the desert man in black armor to lay his hands on the sacred Triforce. Thou must never suffer that man with his evil heart to enter the sacred realm of legend. That evil man who cast the death curse upon me and sapped my power. Because of that curse, my end is nigh. Through your valiant efforts to break the curse were successful, I was doomed before you started. Yes, I will pass away soon, but do not grieve for me. I have been able to tell you of these important matters. This is Hyrule's final hope. Link, go now to Hyrule Castle. There, thou will surely meet the Princess of Destiny. Take the stone with you, the stone that man wanted so much that he cast this curse upon me. Here's our first one. You got the Kokuri Emerald. This is the spiritual stone of the forest, now entrusted to you by the deep, great Deku Tree. The future depends upon thee, Link. Thou art courageous. Navi the Fairy, help Link to carry out my will. I entreat ye, Navi, good bye. I'm so sad. But all life goes on, doesn't it?
One end is merely a beginning of another. Let's go to Hyrule Castle, Link. Good. Bye, Great Deku Tree. Hey, Link. What did you do? The Great Deku Tree, did he die? How could you do a thing like that? It's all your fault. Yeah, we can't uh, make friends and influence everybody, I guess. All right, that was it. The Great Deku Tree. The next place we need to go is Hyrule Castle. To do so, we need to leave the forest for the first time in the game. And to do that, you march your way all the way across that main thoroughfare right there. And you have to cross this bridge. Oh, you're leaving? I knew that you would leave the forest someday, Link. Because you are different from me and my friends. But that's okay. Because we'll be friends forever, won't we? I want you to have this ocarina. Please take good care of it. We've got a title, people. We have our ocarina. You received the fairy ocarina. Hmm. Are there more than one? You can set this memento, you can you can put it on one of your buttons like the uh Deku stick, the seed, the slingshot. They're telling me that right now. And then you can play songs using these buttons and this button. Um anyway, these six buttons allow you to play the ocarina as if you're you know pressing the air holes on an actual ocarina. And when you play my ocarina, I hope that you will think of me and come back to the forest to visit. First time, Hyrule Field. Quite a lot of time spent here during the game, but this is our first time. Also first time for him. Hoot hoot! It appears that the time has come finally start your adventure. You will encounter many hardships ahead. That is your fate. Don't feel discouraged, even during the toughest times. Go straight this way, and you'll see Hyrule Castle. You will meet the princess there. If you are lost and don't know which way to go, look at the map. The areas you have explored, we talked about this earlier, will be flashing and he's telling us how to use the maps. And yes, we got all that. All right, then. I'll see you around. Hoot hoot. He's an owl. <laughs> kind of on the nose, right? On the beak. There you have it, guys. That was the Deku Tree. Next time, we're going to go see the princess up at the castle. And I hope you join me for that. Please leave any comments you have below. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so to see more videos like this in the future. Until next time, this is Loud Boy. You have a good one.